This is the 2015 NASCAR Canadian Tire Series Year in Review, powered by Mopar. Away from the track, teams were busy preparing their cars for the final push. Joey McCall, lead driver for Bud Morris's CBRT outfit, was not only busy at their Ajax Ontario shop recovering from the carnage of Saskatoon, but was also being honored by the NASCAR Green Division for the team's environmental efforts within the sport. Super proud, um, super proud to be recognized by NASCAR Green. Um, something that you know I've put a lot of time and effort into. I'm, I'm really passionate about it. Uh, my background in schools, and, and I really truly do believe that uh, you know we need to have sustainability as top of mind if we're going to even think about racing 20 years from now. As they neared the end of a grueling run of four races in three weeks, teams had to regroup quickly for the seventh race of the season. Going into St. Eustache, Scott Steckley held a four-point lead over rival Jason Hathaway thanks to a dominant tour out west. Now Scott Steckley finally jumps on the loud pedal and we're underway in St. Eustache. The number 17 of DJ Kennington and the number 02 of Mark Dilley continue their Saskatoon success with top three runs early on. It's a give-and-take track with plenty of rooting and gouging mixed in. Without fail, the boiling point comes quickly and ferociously. Joey McCall held the lead briefly, but a turn one altercation with the 18 of Alex Tagliani foiled his chances at a solid finish. Spotter called me clear, and uh, Tagliani decided to pull a Tagliani and, you know, dive bomb it in there with 100 laps to go. You know, ruined our, ruined our night. Also caught up in the turn one mess was Jason Hathaway, who'd made steady progress from the back of the field. Took the radiator out, I think a body brace or something, took the radiator out and we had to pit. So uh, we changed the radiator in like 31 laps. I was pretty impressed with our guys. And, and um, you know, the oil's hot, the water's hot, and I'm in there yelling at them, telling them to hurry up. So um, I got a pretty good, pretty good crew they put up with me. I, I get pretty excited sometimes. With his nearest challenger in the points parked in the infield, Steckley went to work up front. Lap after lap, the 17 of Kennington was getting quicker. His Castrol Edge Mopar powered Dodge liked the long runs and soon challenged Steckley for supremacy. Uh, it was one of our older cars, um, but it worked really good at San Stash and we're really happy with it. Me and DJ had fun there. I, I joke with him. I, I let him. I told him I let him go by to see the line he was running, and then I took that line and drove back past him. So I don't think he liked that too much. Kennington and LeBay were soon embedded in their own drama as they fought hard for second place. LeBay drove the 36 car too hard into turn one, climbing the Castrol Edge car's left rear wheel and taking both drivers out of contention. After holding a dominant lead through 220 laps and with only 19 to go, the mechanism inside the spool broke on the right side of the number 22 Canadian Tire Dodge. Steckley limped home to a 10th place finish. It broke when I was on the gas coming off four because right when it broke, then the car shot straight to the wall. With the 22 out of the picture, the race was wide open for the taking. In a final green-white checkered finish, Mark Dilley in the Leland 02 and Andrew Ranger in the Mopar Blue, along with LP Dumoulin and Mark Antoine Cameron, all battled for the win. Looking for the same piece of real estate. Contact Dumoulin into the back of Dilley. Ranger to the inside. So at one point, my main goal was to just go and then shake it up. Uh, LP was going for a win, and uh, when he hit the uh... When he hit the delay, I back up a little bit, and I should not do that because I, I'm pretty sure I will be able to pass uh, Ranger on the inside. I lift, and then uh, Ranger took the lead. Dilly was right behind me, and I have a ton of push. And I say, I need to turn left, I need to turn left, but the car was just not turning, and uh, it finished like a drag race. Seriously, it, it was a tough one, but I was so happy for my team. It was Rangers' 20th career NASCAR win, and the two-time champion from Roxton Pond, Quebec, savored it. More importantly, with some good fortune finally on his side, he was once again part of the championship conversation. From St. Eustache, the series made a short trip east along Auto Route 40 to the beautiful city of Trois-Rivières, Quebec. 
This quaint town nestled on the St. Lawrence River has long been a hotbed for motorsports in Canada and thrives on its annual Grand Prix. Fresh off his win at St. Eustache, Andrew Ranger qualified his Mopar Dodge at the front of the field for the 50-lap race. The top three rows were occupied by Quebec's finest, and at the drop of the green, both Kevin Lacroix and Alex Tagliani were immediately putting pressure on Ranger. GP3R is a track that demands both offense and defense at the same time. If you want to be the first to cross the line, you can't afford to hang back. Here, patience does not pay off. The town of Trois-Rivières is home to brothers LP and JF de Moulin. Their team was doing well on the ovals, but finding success while turning right was proving to be a challenge. Louis Philippe raced the number 47 WeatherTech Dodge to a top five finish, while Jean-Francois's day ended early as he crashed heavily into the turn six tire barrier. Just the angle we hit, because I had one up one that long, and then I tried to break, wheel hop, and I'm gonna go straight, ah, oh, maybe I can get this, and yeah, not work. The action was fierce throughout the field as they funneled through the Duplessis gate. Up front, things were shaping up to be a repeat performance of the race at Icar earlier in the season. Tagliani hung back in third, while the number 74 of Kevin Lacroix and the 27 of Andrew Ranger gave the fans a thrilling show through the final pair of turns. The only place he can pass me is there and I block him, so I, I knew that he would uh, punch me in the back a little bit. If I touch him, I think it was still uh, respectful because he blocked me and I just like touch him a little bit uh, smoothly, so it was not too hard. And on the last corner, like I said, I gave him a lot of chances. But it was not too hard. It was okay. No, no problem with that. It's just uh, the last corner, uh, I say, look, I'm okay. You will break because it's got to be my, my corner on the right side. But I will never think that he will go straight away. GP3R is like you're already pumped up, and when you get the win, it's uh, it's amazing. In just his fourth NASCAR race, Kevin Lacroix recorded his second victory and will forever be able to call himself a winner at Three Rivers. Ranger did not lament the loss for long as his attention turned to the championship. His strong finishes at Saskatoon, St. Eustache, and Three Rivers put him just six markers behind Scott Stackley with only three races to go. You're watching the 2015 NASCAR Canadian Tire Series Year in Review, powered by Mopar on TSN.